to go live on Facebook. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, uh, I'm sorry. no problem. We're going to start with a little centering, quieting uh, practice before uh, we actually start the formal interview. But I just want to say, um, there are so many familiar faces here tonight, um, old friends and new friends, and I just want to say thank you everybody for coming out. And if you haven't found the snacks already, we've got snacks outside on the uh, deck, we've got wine up front, and we have a very special elixir that Dr. Subnani would like you to uh, taste after uh, the talk. So that's over on the table by the side, okay? And we will also have some cards we're gonna be passing around. So um, the talk is going to be about 20 minutes. We are live and it is also being recorded. So please, if you have a conversation you need to have, you can take that into the front room or out on the deck. Are we good to go? Good. So everyone, if you could please um, come to an upright seated position, or if you're standing, try not to lean against something for just a moment. This is just a one minute centering practice. If it is okay for you, if it's available at this time, please close your eyes and deepen your breath. As you inhale, the belly expands, and as you exhale, the belly contracts. Big, deep, full body breath. Notice if you're holding any unnecessary tension in your body, perhaps in your face or around your lips, and see if you can allow your eyes to come gently closed and your lips to come slightly parted. Inhale, the belly expands, and exhale, the belly contracts. Feel the weight of your body on the ground. Feel yourself come into alignment with gravity, your head stacked above your heart and your heart stacked above your pelvis. Deep, full body breathing. Become aware of the shape of your body in space. Notice if you're leaning to one side or the other, forward or back, and come to center as you deepen your breath. Lengthen your spine allowing the crown of your head to reach up towards the ceiling as your breath grows even slower. Cultivate a sense of astonishment at this wondrous contraption each of us is inhabiting. How many adventures we needed even to get here. And before you open your eyes, I would like you to be surprised. As you open your eyes, imagine you're seeing the entire world, shapes and colors for the first time. Arrive with a sense of astonishment. How did I get here? Allow your eyes to open just a small little crack until you can see some shapes, and then allow them to fall closed again. And then allow your eyes open large enough to start seeing colors and forms, and allow them to fall closed again. <coughs> and then with a sense of awe, allow your eyes to come fully open and feel a sense of expansiveness as you arrive in this place in this time. Dr. Karuna Subnani is a natural medicine expert who has applied Ayurvedic philosophy and the healing power of nature with patients nationally and internationally for over 20 years. Her advice has been sought after in Cosmo, Yoga Journal, Healthline, and Allure magazines. She has appeared on Dr. Oz and Judy Greer's show, Reluctantly Healthy, on the CW Network. She speaks worldwide about the importance of beauty and pleasure in wellness. You can find her posting regularly on Instagram at Dr. Karuna Sabani. Tonight's talk will be called Beauty and Art as Essential Nourishment. And I can't think of a better place for this talk. 
um, where all of the principles that are being spoken of are actually landing here on the planet, in the earth element, right in this place. Beauty, health, wellness, art, and community all in one spot. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sabnani. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, tonight's talk uh, about art as essential nourishment uh, was kind of a revelation for me. Uh, we've known each other for almost two decades, and um, it was only really recently that I learned that you'd studied acting and you have a degree in literature. Um, I had no idea that the arts and your love of the arts had informed your um, health practice, your wellness practice so deeply. Is it true that you actually prescribe aesthetic experiences to your clients, and why? So, in reflecting on this question, because we were speaking prior uh, to this event, I realized that beauty's actually been the blood of my entire practice and my entire career. And I started out with a psychology and English literature major focusing on poetry, which a guy knows also your love, and I never thought I would be a doctor. And what really brought me to wanting to study that was, what was that vital force that put that poem on the paper or that art in the frame? Like I, and I, in that naivete at that time, thought it was coming from the mind. So I thought, oh, if I study psychology as well, I'll understand that force that just blows you away when you read you know, a classic piece of literature or stare at a sunset or view a piece of art. As time went on, many faded things happened and I entered naturopathic medical school and I'm in my 21st year of practice. About 10 years into my practice, you know, still with that foundation but not knowing how much it was going to be medicine for people, um, I realized that there was a missing piece in the medicine. You know, when you're first practicing, things are very cookie cutter, meaning you want to get it right. It doesn't really become an art until your 10th year. And even though people were getting better, I felt like there was a foundational piece that was always lacking. And it came to me actually on a retreat that the missing piece was pleasure, pleasure and beauty. How I came to that is I often test patients in the last decade uh, for hormones. And one of the hormones that I test for is oxytocin, which is the pleasure hormone. Every patient, and probably hundreds I've tested, have been below normal except for two people. This is shocking to me because you know, I travel a lot internationally. People tend to think of Americans as so hedonistic. Why do you think this is? Okay, so this is a great question, and um, exactly what I was about to touch on is I realized that there is a massive disconnect going on in our society. The more that we're actually connected, social media, now we're, you know, there's going to be AI, we're getting more and more technologically connected, we're getting disconnected inside. Now, what I realized as I was working with people, a lot of them who were very well off in New York City, is that they were really sick and I didn't understand how you could have so much around you and not be well. Like, why were they having heart attacks? What was going on? Why were they starving? You know, and I'm gonna let that drop. There was like a literal starvation in them. And, you know, I'll share a story. I was doing a home session with the billionaire and he had a brownstone in New York, he had an estate in Connecticut, a yacht in the Hamptons, you name it, he had it. I did a house call um, on his estate in Connecticut and he had a man-made forest and river that he put in. But it was gorgeous and we sat on the deck and we did the session and he had had a heart attack and so we were talking about his heart health and he couldn't stop working though he didn't need the money. And I said, you know, this is so astounding that you have this beautiful piece of property and this forest, do you ever stop and take it in? And he looked at me and he said, I've never sat here for even five minutes. 
and enjoyed this because he was always on the go. You know, four days in Manhattan, you're traveling. And I almost think he got silent for the first time in his life. You know, he's a Wall Streeter, you know. And that, you know, in this process of reflecting on what actually makes people sick, I realized that most people are feeding their head hunger and starving their soul hunger or their subtle hunger. So um, as, as we started talking about this, as we talked about doing this talk and maybe yeah. even doing a retreat focusing on um, beauty and art as uh, more than just uh, entertainment, but as a, like an essential vitamin almost, but it really was a revelation for me the first time that you helped me to rethink of my own work and, and some of the work even here tonight reflects this as nutritious. Can you tell us a little bit more, like, how can art, I, I, you're not eating it, you're not putting it in your mouth. Can you tell us more about the relationship between beauty, art, and nourishment, and why is that important? Yeah, so when you feed your senses the wrong food, you get sick. Oh. So what we need to realize, if I could leave everybody with one takeaway, mm -hmm. is to be conscious that your five senses are eating all the time. Whether or not you realize it, your senses are consuming. We're consuming light, we're consuming toxicity from the news, we're consuming you know, toxic noise from traffic. Whatever you're taking in, your body has to digest it. Your liver has to digest it, right? So if you can just get aware, first of all, that that's happening, they're eating all the time, your senses are eating, then you have the choice and the consciousness to change it. Right? And I'm, we're going to talk about you know, how to do that. Mm -hmm. But when you feed yourself the wrong nutrition, you get sick. And that is the base of why people get sick. So are you saying like the, the artwork you have on the walls, the rock and roll posters that you put up, or you know, that this can actually affect your health, the images that you surround yourself with? So what your senses are doing, and this was really interesting in researching more just this last week about mirror neurons, Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a controversial topic, but whether or not you know you believe in like the neurobiology of mirror neurons and oh, studying different parts of the brain, our mind is a mirror. Mm -hmm. We're a mirror, right? Many spiritual traditions speak about the the witness state as being mirror-like. Yeah, and it's my favorite symbol. Mm -hmm. um, but what the studies have shown, and what we all know, if we just drop it and think about it, is. When you're taking in a piece of beauty, a sunset, a piece of art, music, it's actually not with just one sense. It's synesthetic, my new favorite word. You're taking it in with all five senses. You're not taking it in with your mind. And when you activate the art as nutrition and nourishment, as you were saying, you never thought these pieces could actually be food, which is, you know, I say it, be intentional with your pleasure and eat beauty as medicine, right? That's my entire tagline. And it's when you're conscious, A, that the senses are eating, and B, that this is happening in the brain, scientifically. So you're saying it's happening whether we know it's happening or whether we're consciously doing it or not? Well, this is the big thing, too. If you're not conscious of it, your mirror neurons are going to take in all the toxicity, too. Right. So when you choose consciously mm -hmm. to put certain things in front of you, and again, this is music, it can be a piece of art, it can be anything that brings you delight and aesthetic rapture, it starts breaking that concrete frame that you've been in, that stale stuckness that makes people sick. And you know, autoimmune disease is on the rise, and for those of you who don't know what autoimmunity is, it's where your body starts attacking itself, and there's a lack of knowing what's me, what's not me. Right. So when you use art as nourishment, and you use what I like to say, like a beauty window, mm -hmm. you know, or art as mirror, you're imprinting your mind. I am that, mm -hmm. I am that, mm -hmm. I am that. I am not this, I am not this poison, poison that you're feeding yourself and all of a sudden mistaking who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's not, this is not just an idea, it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, most of us have sludge, you know, we're taking in so much crap, it's just the truth, and you have to remove it first. 
you know, eating just kale and green juice, it's not going to do it, you know, it's, it's a practice, <laughs> you know, otherwise we, you know, kale would just be completely in recession, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to be conscious of it, remove it, and, you know, get silent and realize that everything that you're taking in is being mirrored. Back. Okay, so this is, this is a really key point. I think at this point, uh, I, I know that I'm totally sold on the idea. <laughs> so much so that I'm thinking of like making medicinal art, right? Like food groups of art. Um, but I think really as we near the end of this uh, talk, uh, I think it would be really helpful for folks to know how we can actually begin to have aesthetic awareness. Like how do we cultivate that uh, extra focus on how do we know what's good for us? Uh, can you give us some steps to start? So first of all, Eka, you do make medicinal art. I mean, who has not seen Eka's art in the real life? I mean, it's definitely the symmetry and congruence we want as mirrors, right? Um, so the first step to having aesthetic awareness is pausing and getting silent in yourself so that the awareness that you are and that you have can connect. What are you connecting to? You want to connect to an object or an appearance of delight. What delights you? And one of my favorite phrases that's newer is like, what's heart honey to you? Or one of my other um, friends says, you know, oh, that gives me the goosies, like the goosebumps. You know, what does that for you? And it'll keep changing, right? And put your awareness without multitasking. So this is the secret, right? Because, you know, someone may say to me, but I listen to music all the time, and I eat amazing chocolate that costs $15 a bar. And, you know, I have Ica's art hanging in my walls, and I have million-dollar pieces in my wall. Do you ever take time right. to take it in, to digest it, to eat it, right? So after that, after you pause and you take it in, whatever you delight, you just take it in. Remember though, I wanna go back, you have to take off the sludge, everybody. You can't just, you know, it's like news, 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 oh, five minutes, oh look, there's the art. It's a, pro it's a practice, it's a process, right? And then, when you take it in as food, you focus on it with all your love, your awareness, all that you are, then, you let it linger, just linger. You merge with it, you melt, you marinate. All the favorite words that you can think of that just you know, turn you on, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. And you do this as a practice. I'm okay? thinking also the, um, the Sanskrit term rasa, which means oh, yeah. literally means juice and relates to like imbibing, having an aesthetic experience of the different emotions, like emotional states. So, you can be nourished by the emotions that you feel in front of the artwork as well, right? That's really um, a good point too. So going back to the mirror neurons, what the studies have shown is that when you're looking at a piece of art, right, or taking in music, and the thing is, you're still being activated in different parts of your brain when it's something that's not exalted, like Beethoven, which really makes juicier sacred art, but it's different when there's congruence. And they've done studies. They've changed Michelangelo's work just a little bit. People don't react the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that there's a certain like congruence that you're finding when you're mm -hmm. you know, checking in mm -hmm. with the art. Were there any of the artworks in this show in particular that uh, stand out to you or that uh, really exemplify the principles you're talking about? Yeah, so I... <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's Jennifer's room. No. <laughs> no, it also is that. I mean, we all love rainbows for rainbows. You can see one right behind you on the camera. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's, it's like right in my halo, wonderful. Yeah, just, uh, just above you. Um, I'm so thrilled, actually, that Tripura Sundari is right behind us I'll, I'll here. I'll grab the So, 
How brilliant. Did you notice how everybody paused without us asking you to? You see what awe does, what a piece of art of this capacity does? You got silent. And you know, it's a practice. And it's something, you know, and I'll talk about it in a second to do on a daily basis with all of your senses or pick one. But Mata Prasandri is the emanation of the exact practice that I'm talking about. She is what happens when your awareness pauses to take in appearances of delight and pleasure. She is that process. It's not an image. So this is important too. When we're taking in art, not just art here, any type of art, we, if we're not really tuned in, and it's okay, you know, we live in a concrete world, most of us, we think this is a piece of paper. We think it's 3D. She's not 3D. She's alive. She's 5D. And if you don't see her as that right now, because she's built on, and Aiko could probably do a whole workshop just on her, we'll talk about it for the rest of our lives, really. Um, there's symmetry that's gone into this that's underneath that would bring her life. So the more, you could do your exercise. In fact, I think everybody, we're all here tonight, take some time, pause, get silent, close your eyes, open your eyes, and just focus, uninterrupted, phone off, not talking to the friend next to you, not drinking your wine, and just merge with her. And come to me, and I'll be walking around, what happens to you? I mean, it happened just him holding her up. I feel so blessed to have this in my home. Um, and that impact, this is important, that impact is going to melt into all aspects of your life. Because remember for me, you know, and there's an event that I teach that I don't talk about, it's like the Pleasure Rx. And it's about taking in pleasure as medicine, doing this. And this is, you know, we're just basically not even touching a drop in the ocean because we have time limits. But I did bring, which someone will pass out, um, cards about the experience that I teach where you do this with all five of your senses and then you practice it at home. And it's not just about viewing the art or eating the cookie or imbibing something. It's what it does to break your stagnation mm. of your mundane life. And that space, as it opens up the staleness in you, opens up the reason that you're sick. And it's not just about being sick, because why I decided to be a doctor and bringing it full circle of why I realized how poetry that I studied, you know, all of that literature that is still at my base, how it feeds you as your foundation of your life, as medicine. Because remember how I brought it up, that oxytocin is low in a lot of people, which means even though we have things around us, we're actually not connecting. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing. Everyone pause and connect, connect, connect through your senses. And I brought a special rose elixir that's on this table, so you get a card and do the exercise. Don't, you know, have your wine later, but with this, pause, take a sip of it, and be with it. Let it open you. And the more that you do this practice, the more awareness that comes. Can uh -oh. I give away a little secret? Sure. The, uh -oh. the syrup that we made these elixirs out of was actually on your altar at home. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't take any responsibility for you know, wild spiritual experiences. Yeah, it's been on my altar for two weeks. It's very special for me. This is a very... Um, big moment because I was born in Oakland and I've never spoken in California, wow. only in New York and Italy. And, and this is the same elixir that I um, used at the event that I did in New York my first time. So and it has rose petals in it. It's really delightful. And I wanted to have that kind of time bending you know, for everybody here. So on behalf of the other artists, I, I also want to say that um, the, ex the exercise that she gave you can work not only on any of the artworks here that bring you delight. The key thing is, like, that's the entry point is, yeah. do you find it beautiful? It doesn't matter if somebody else finds it beautiful. And we also have some amazing poets and uh, musicians here that, and even uh, as, uh, scent experiences, these lilies smell amazing. Come and sit at the table with the lilies. 
Um, so there, there's so many beautiful pieces here tonight. So I want to uh, thank you so much on behalf of the other artists, all four of the artists, um, uh, Jennifer Mizuko and uh, Swati and Timo. Um, we are so honored to have you here tonight thank you so and, much. and to uh, really help folks here um, to experience the art the way we as artists experience it, although I have to say it was unconscious until I learned these principles from you. So thank you so much for helping to bring me into conscious competence. On thank this you, topic. and thank you for creating you know, this beautiful art and bringing the goddess alive for us Incredible. that we can take her in. Can we please have a round of applause for Dr. Thank you. And um, before you go, uh, people can find you on Instagram, right, and on Facebook, and you have your own website as well. You're easy to find. Uh, do you, uh, you teach about this? Do you teach courses? Yeah, so my Instagram is Dr. Karuna Sabnani, just D-R-K-A-R-U-N-A-S-A-B-N-A-N-I. And for those watching live, it's there, and my website's also on the card that you all get. There will be upcoming events that I do that are called The Experience. Stay tuned for that. And I also teach this as an online course that's called The Real Detox and The Pleasure Rx because we have to remove that sludge first. So, you know, that's Perfect. really important. Fix the leak so we can actually be pleasure containers. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks thank you, you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us online. And thank you, everybody, here. Please enjoy yourselves and join us now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.